Fellas, it is fight week for UFC 300, the biggest card in UFC history. And I think instead of doing just a main card prediction with one prelim fight that I choose like normal, I've got to go big for this card. Predict the entire card, early prelims up until the main event, because it's just that stack that I, I can't possibly do anything else. So... Yeah, predicting every single fight on this card. Let me know your predictions, especially for the main event and the big fights on the main card. But starting off with the early prelims, Davis and Figueiredo versus Cody Garbrandt. What a big fight to start the early prelims off. It feels so weird saying starting off the early prelims and then going in there with Cody Garbrandt and Davis and Figueiredo. But I feel like this whole narrative of, oh, Cody Garbrandt's got a bad shin and he's going to get knocked out by a powerhouse in Davis and Figueiredo. Yes, it could happen. But I just think Cody Garbrandt's a more skilled fighter. The way I see it is... Yes, it's a big if. Cody Garbrandt could get hit and knocked out just because we all know that Cody Garbrandt has one of the worst chins in the UFC. And Davidson Figueredo being a hard hitter in the flyweight division, moving up to the, the bantamweight division, is probably a stylistic problem on the feet. But if you take away that, and I know it's a big if, but listen, hear me out. If you take away the knockout threat, I think Garbrandt wins this fairly flawlessly. Davidson Figueredo is a good grappler with great jiu-jitsu, as we saw in the flyweight division moving up. But Garbrandt's de dealt with wrestling a lot. He's a great wrestler himself. The only threat that Davidson Figueredo has when it comes to grappling is potentially mixing it up and, you know, mixing his striking up with his grappling. I don't think he's going to have any significant grappling threat. He didn't really do much. Against, I mean, he did a little bit against Rob Font, but nothing significant. And then on the feet, Cody Garbrandt is one of the most slickest, most technical, faster strikers in the bantamweight division. His chin has let him down, but when it comes to technicality and offense, Cody Garbrandt is insane. We just saw him against Brian Kelliger, and I feel like he's started to pick up the pace again as, as Cody Garbrandt recently. And I'm going Cody Garbrandt to win this fight by decision. I really do think at the end of the fight, he will have won it by decision. I think if, if he doesn't get knocked out, it could be flawless, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, untouchable or anything like that. And I don't think it's going to be, you know, Cody Garbrandt versus Dominic Cruz too. Obviously, Davis and Figueredo is going to be able. To, well, he's going to be trying to mix it up with his grappling, and he's got the big knockout threat which he could land. Um, but I'm going to go Cody Garbrandt to win this fight. I think he's going to win at the end of the night. I think he's going to be quicker on the feet, and it's going to be Cody Garbrandt piecing up Davis and Figueredo. And all that Figueredo is going to have is a few leg kicks and a few times where he goes for the grappling exchanges and tries looking for the big shot. So I'm going Cody Garbrandt to win this one by decision. Hopefully, his chin doesn't let him down. But yeah, I'm going Garbrandt by decision. Then we've got Bobby Green versus um, Jim Miller. Yeah, another fun fight. I just wish it would have been Jim Miller versus like a Paul Felder. They had the chance to do an old head versus an old head. I think Bobby Green, as good as Jim... Listen, I understand Jim Miller has looked good recently. And not even just against old washed people. He's looked good against up-and-comers as Jim Miller. But I feel like Bobby Green's a little bit of a big step up for Jim Miller. Bobby Green's still dangerous. I know he's just been brutally knocked out by Jalen Turner. And even I'm surprised that he's back this quickly. I thought he'd be out for like a year after that stoppage against Jalen Turner. But he's back. I just think I don't I just don't think there's a route for victory for Jim Miller here. On the feet, I think Bobby Green's a much more slicker boxer in this current current stage of his career. And then I don't think there's uh, Bobby Green's got great takedown defense as well. Bobby Green's got really underrated takedown defense. Not like Jim Miller's gonna go for the takedown anyway. I also think Jim Miller's gonna try and fight more, not to win, but to scrap. It's UFC 300. It's a big occasion. It's the biggest fight he's gonna have from now on. I think Jim Miller's going to try and make it too much of a, you know, a bloody fun fight, a war. Whereas Bobby Green, I think he's going to be more technical and cautious after he's just been absolutely brutally knocked out. And I'm, I'm going to go Bobby Green to piece up Jim Miller across three rounds. Not dominate him. I do think Jim Miller will have successful moments, but I think Bobby Green will be the better fighter across three rounds. So I'm going Bobby Green to win this one by decision. Then we've got Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. Now... This is actually going to be a decent fight. I do think people have overheated it. I'm not saying it's going to be fight of the night or anything like that, but you've got two violent women in there. It's got to end in a stoppage, and I think it will go in favour of Marina Rodriguez. I'm going with Marina Rodriguez to win this one by TKO in the third round. Jessica Andrade, she's coming off a good win over Mackenzie Dern, but that's because Mackenzie Dern's striking is god-awful. And before that, Jessica Andrade was an absolute losing skid, and I just don't think she's that consistent of a fighter as Andrade. I don't think she's ready for the top level of the level of the, uh, of the division. And Marina Rodriguez, I'm not saying she's not been you know um, consistent either. She's been quite inconsistent, but... I think she's quite dangerous in Marina Rodriguez, and I think she's a much more technical fighter than Jessica Andrade, and I just don't think Andrade can afford to be all scrappy against Rodriguez, and the danger that Rodriguez has, I think she's going to land a big shot in that third round, wobble Andrade, and go for the finish, so I'm going Marina Rodriguez to win this one by TKO in the third round, but I think it's going to be back and forth up until then, it's going to be a bit of a scrap, not an absolute war, but they're both going to be landing, they're both going to be have, you know, uh, landing in the pocket, they're both going to be quite successful on the feet, until eventually Rodriguez lands a big shot. Then we've got 
Jalen Turner versus Renato Maikano. I'm going Jalen Turner to win this one by decision. I think he's, yeah, I think it's going to be an absolute war. I don't think it's going to be one-sided. I don't think it's going to be one fighter absolutely battering the other. I just don't think, to be completely honest, I just don't think Maikano can get past Turner when it comes to the styles of each other. But I think it's going to be an absolute war. Both of these guys come to scrap, win or loss. We saw Maikano against Drew Dauber. It was a scrap. And we even saw him when he, when he loses fights against guys like RDA. He comes to scrap. And then Jalen Turner as well, coming off a brutal, brutal knockout over Bobby Green, which impressed me a lot. And before that, he just about lost to Dan Hooker, which he could have gone either way, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go. It's, I think it's going to be an absolute war. It's going to be the best fight on the early prelims. But I think Jalen Turner, because of how tall he is and lanky, I think the range and his distance management could be effective. And I think he's got more chance of landing a big shot than uh, Renato Maikano does, which could you know put him ahead in the judges' scorecard. So I'm going Jalen Turner to win this one by decision, but it's going to be an absolute war is that fight, and I can't wait for it. Then we've got Diego Lopez versus Sadiq Youssef. Yeah, both of these guys, again, it's going to be an absolutely interesting fight. Another war, another really fun fight to see. We've got Sadiq Youssef, who just goes out there and gets it done most of the time. I don't think he's elite, elite of the, the elite of the division, um, Sadiq Youssef, but he goes out there and gets it done a lot of the time. Still fairly dangerous on the feet, but he's very technical. And then Diego Lopez is just all guns blazing, just a dangerous fighter in general. So I'm going to go Diego Lopez. I know that Sadiq Youssef, he's very, very defensively sound. Um, and I, I've just got a feeling, though, that Diego Lopez at UFC 300, he's going to land a big shot, and it's going to be the Diego Lopez party, and I'm just going to go TKO round three. I've got a really weird feeling that Diego Lopez is going to land a big shot on, um, on Sadiq Youssef, and even though Sadiq Youssef is really technically sound... I've got Diego Lopez winning this one by third round TKO. I also think Diego Lopez is going to try and mix it up with the grappling as well. And again, he could also have threats there, you know, dangerous ground and pound as well that he could get. So I'm going to go Diego Lopez TKO round three, but it wasn't the easiest one to predict. They're both very, very technical. And then we get Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. I've got Holly Holm winning this one by decision. I just think Kayla Harrison... She's just too old, and I'm not even sure. I think the weight cut is going to be too much as well. I think she's going to be like, I think the the drawbacks of the weight cut is going to be incredible for for uh, Kayla Harrison. She's way too big for the division. She's way too big. She's practically a lightweight. She's like the Michael Chandler of female MMA. She's going to be way too big, and she's going to miss weight. And even if she makes weight, she's going to have to kill herself. She's going to have to take a leg off to actually make weight. So for Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison, I know Holly Holm. You know she's old. She's bit battered she's not the most consistent she's just been finished but i think holly holm will be the more technical one in the night and i think it's not going to take much to beat kayla harrison kayla harrison she's on the big league now she's in the ufc holly holm's been fighting in the big league against the top level competition for the longest time and i just think holly holm's going to get enough done to win the decision by the end of the fight i just think kayla harrison she's missed a, ta a chance and the weight cut's going to be way too big so i'm going holly holm to win this fight and then we have calvin cater versus aljamain sterling yeah, I, I just think this isn't a good fight for Aljamain Sterling. I think moving up to the heavyweight division, I mean, he was already quite a big bantamweight, but now that he's not even got the size advantage in the heavy, in the featherweight division, I think Calvin Cater's got this one. Obviously, it's going to be Aljamain Sterling trying to take the back of Calvin Cater, and it's going to be try, Calvin Cater defending the takedowns and trying to fight off the bat. But I, I think it's going to be a lot of Calvin Cater defending the takedowns and maybe he doesn't because he, uh, there's not much grapplers in the featherweight division at least at the top level so it could be a new style to Calvin Cater but I think he's going to defend a lot of the takedowns that Sterling has to offer and he's going to absolutely piece him up on the feet Sterling has nothing on the feet he doesn't have I mean he's an awkward striker but he doesn't have any threat on the feet and it's going to be Calvin Cater piecing up Sterling on the feet and then every now and then Sterling's going to shoot him for a double leg try and get the back and he's not going to get it um, and especially in the featherweight division I just think I don't it was a bit of a random move to, the, to move to this division and I just think this isn't a favorable matchup it's going to be a striker versus a grappler but i think calvin kate is going to piece him up across three rounds and it's going to be another calvin kate to win over aljamain sterling then we've got yuri prohaska versus alexander rakic yeah i've got yuri winning this fight i think he's one of the most awkward craftiest strikers in the ufc and alexander rakic is good I just don't think he's... His offense doesn't impress me. I think he could have a lot more offense. He tries too hard to be technical. He tries too hard when it comes to things like distance management. And he ends up being quite a boring fighter. Yuri's going to try and make it a scrap. 
Alexander Rakic is going to be, in my opinion, not offensively sound enough. And it's just going to be Yuri Prohaska landing the bigger shots across the three rounds. It's going to be quite... I feel like they both... Not both, but especially for the fact that he's just been um, injured, has Alexander Rakic. And he's coming back after an injury on the biggest card of all time against a dangerous and crafty Yuri Prohaska. He didn't even have a step-up fight. Yeah, I'm going Yuri Prohaska to win this one by decision. I think he's going to be too crafty for uh, for Alexander Rakic and he's going to get it done. Then we've got Bo Nickel versus Cody Brundage. Yeah, Cody Brundage is he's a bit of a weird like he's 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 got he's dangerous in everywhere as Cody Brundage, but he also leaves himself to get caught on the feet. He leaves himself to get um you know uh, caught in submissions. And I think Bo Nickel is a really he's one of the best prospects in the UFC, one of the best hype trains in the UFC. I, I did wish he got a higher step up in competition than Cody Brundage, but I think it's going to be a lot of Bo Nickel going for the takedown. And and I do think that Cordy Brundage is going to be able to last the first round. Um, it's no Val Woodman. It's no can. Cordy Brundage is quite dangerous. And I think Bo Nickel in the first round is going to take him down, do a lot of damage when it comes to ground and pound, and not get the finish. Maybe, you know, threat a couple of submissions, but he's not going to be able to get the finish. And then in the second round is where I think Bo Nickel is going to either land a big shot or he's going to land some big ground and pound strikes and then eventually get him in like an arm triangle. So I'm going to go arm triangle, a very specific submission. I'm going Bo Nickel to win this fight by arm triangle against Cordy Brundage. Yeah, he's going to land a big shot either in ground or pound or on the feet in the second round follow up with an arm triangle submission and we're going to see Cord and we're going to see Bo Nickel get that submission against Cordy Brundage then we've got Armand Sarukin versus Charles Oliveira one of the most interesting fights on this card now I'm going with Armand Sarukin to win this fight I don't think anyone's really going with Armand Sarukin but I've got a weird feeling that Charles Oliveira I don't think I think the grappling is going to be the big question that's going to be answered in this fight because Charles Oliveira you look at his, his, his lightweight resume and a lot of it is against well you look at it against Gaethje and Poirier it was against two favourable matchups because of the striking of the both against Chandler Chandler his fight IQ is absolutely horrendous but Neil Darius was a dangerous fight which I will you know he was able to land a big shot on the feet but I feel like Armand Sarukian, it's too difficult for a stylistic matchup for Charles Oliveira. I think the grappling of Armand Sarukian, and I'm not saying he can't get caught in any submission because at the end of the day, it's Charles Oliveira. You know, he pulls off the most random things, but I think the grappling of Armand Sarukian, I think he's a much better wrestler than Charles Oliveira, and I think he's going to do, uh, you know, use a lot of offensive wrestling against Oliveira, and I don't think he's going to get caught in any submissions, and we're going to see Armand Sarukian look like the more elite grappler out of the two of them, or at least a more elite wrestler using ground and pound. I'm not saying he's going to be as dominant as Islam Makachev was but I think he's going to be a much more offensively sound grappler and then on the feet Charles Oliveira both of them are great strikers I think he's been an absolute war on the feet but I just don't think Oliveira is going to get enough done to get that finish and I'm going to go Armand Sarukin he's, he is only a free rounder yeah I'm going Armand Sarukin to win this one by decision I think the first few rounds, he's going to use a, a, a very, you know, high-level offensive wrestling against Charles Oliveira. It could end up quite boring. It could end up just being him uh, uh, holding him up against the cage. But I do think Armin Sarukin is one of the best wrestler in the, wrestlers in the division. And I think unless Charles Oliveira catches him in a submission, which I guess is a big if, but unless he catches him in a submission, I think Armin sarukin has got this one. And I'm going Armin Sarukin to win this one by decision. Maybe Oliveira can land a big shot on the feet. Maybe he can catch him in a submission. But I just don't think it's... I, I just think it's one of the most difficult matchups for Charles Oliveira in the division outside of Islam Makachev and I think we are going to see Armand Sarukin versus Islam too so unfortunately for the Armand, for the uh, Charles Oliveira fans I'm going Armand Sarukin to win this one by decision then we've got Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway now this is a five rounder I'm pretty sure it is it's, it's for a belt the BMF belt it's going to be an absolute scrap but I just think it's going to be too offensive from Justin Gaethje Listen, Max Holloway's got a great chin, and I'm not saying he can't transition to lightweight. He's looked great in the... Well, he looked great at um, training. He looks massive. But I've, I just think in the later rounds, it's going to get too much for Max Holloway. He's fighting in the lightweight division against the hardest hitter in the division above him, in Justin Gaethje. And to be completely honest, I think it's going to be a doctor stoppage. I think there's going to be too much blood. Oh, both of these guys, they're both going to go out there and have an absolute war. They're both going to be taking years off their life. They're both going to just be non-stop, all guns blazing on the feet, but I think Gaethje's going to be a lot more effective. Holloway, I, I guess he could outclass... I don't think he's going to outclass Gaethje with his boxing because Gaethje's also an elite striker and an elite boxer. He's looked really good in his last few fights against Dustin Poirier and Rafael Fazir, who were both elite strikers as well. And I feel like across five rounds, Gaethje's going to be too much for Holloway, and eventually the doctor's going to have to stop the fight because of how much damage Holloway's taken. So I know it's a bit of a random prediction, but I'm going Justin Gaethje to win this one by fifth round doctor stoppage it's going to be a brutal fight and it's going to be a war and then we have the common event Zhang Wali versus Yang Zhao Nan 
yeah. I think Zhang Wili is going to go out there and just basically dominate Yang Zhao Nan across five rounds. I don't think it's going to be as dominant as the Amanda Lemos fight. I do believe that Yang Zhao Nan is going to put up more of a fight. But it just Yang Zhao Nan isn't a contender that strikes me as a, a possible title threat to Zhang Wili. I think Zhang Wili is a much more elite grappler. I think that's the that's what we're going to see in this fight. We're going to see Zhang Wili, you know, do 400,000 takedowns in this fight. Constant pressure, constant takedowns against Zhang Zhao Nan and a lot of damage on the ground and pound. I think it's going to be a yeah, a lot of ground and power from Zhang Wili. On the feet, Yang Zhaonan, you know, she's a great striker, but I, th I still feel like Zhang Wili's a more elite striker, and she's faced more elite strikers than Yang Zhaonan. Uh, she could even pull off a finish, could Zhang Wili. She could land a big shot. She could get a quick submission. Like she, well, not quick, but she could get a submission like she did against Calder Esparza. But I trust Yang Zhaonan, but I still think she's going to get dominated. I'm going five rounds of domination by Zhang Wili, all up until a decision. And then the main event, Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. Now, I know that most people are going to be thinking that uh, Alex Pereira is going to land that big shot against Jamal Hill. And even though he could do that, I do think Alex Pereira is going to win. And I'm going with fourth round TKO. I think what's going to happen now, Jamal Hill has had a leg injury that he's recovering from. And I think he's come back way too fast against Alex Pereira at UFC 300. I think he's seen the fight against Alex Pereira and he's decided to come back way too quickly. And I don't think he, I don't know if his legs are going to be fully healed. And I think it's way too dangerous anyway because he's against Alex Pereira. You look at Alex Pereira, his biggest threat is his left hook. His second biggest threat is his leg kicks. He has some of the most dangerous leg kicks in the UFC. And when you're doing that to a recovering Jamal Hill... I think it's a recipe for disaster. I think for the first three rounds, it's going to be Alex Pereira absolutely destroying Jamal Hill with those leg kicks until eventually around the third or the fourth round. Jamal Hill's not going to be as effective on the feet. He's going to be tripping all over the place. And eventually, this is where Pereira is going to come in for the kill. Land a big shot. Um, I don't think he's going to brutally sleep him, but I think he's going to land a big shot. Jamal Hill's going to fall, get knocked down. And eventually, Pereira is going to finish him with a flurry of punches, get the TKO finish, and it's going to be Pereira with a TKO. And I'm going to go with a fourth round TKO. Jamal Hill's still dangerous, but I just don't think there's anything that he can do that Pereira can't. Jamal Hill's got good distance, so does Pereira. Jamal Hill's got good boxing, so does Pereira. Jamal Hill's got power, so does Pereira. I just think Pereira's pretty much better everywhere than Jamal Hill. Um, he's also, uh, he, I just think he could easily land that big shot called Pereira, but I feel like, yeah, leg kicks up until the finish. Um, yeah, that's the, what I think Pereira's game plan is going to be. He's going to destroy that leg and then around round three, round four, coming with a big left hook drop Jamal Hill and Jamal Hill's going to have nothing left he's going to be gassed and Jamal and Alex Pereira's going to get the finish but yeah that is my prediction for UFC 300 the entire card let me know your prediction down below at least for the main event and your thoughts what yeah just your overall thoughts for every fight on this card and yeah thank you for watching